Well, if you love fall like I do, then you're going to love this fabric fall haul. Um, fall is my favorite time of the year. So if you're interested to see what I've been making, what I'm going to make, keep watching. All right, you guys, so let's get started. First of all, I have on my favorite fall sweater. I would have a pumpkin spice latte if I was able to get up this morning and go get one. <laughs> But fall is like my absolute favorite time of the year. And I have a rule about fall. So my rule about fall is if October 1st comes, it's fall. I don't care if it's 98 degrees outside. I don't care if it's 70 degrees outside. I don't care if it's 100 degrees outside. If October 1st is here, it's fall. So... I have to do that cut off because I'm originally from Atlanta. I live in Atlanta now and like Atlanta is tripping on the fall time. Like it's, it's, it gives us teasers where it's like days where it's like, I feel a breeze, fall is coming, you put on that sweater and then by one o'clock in the afternoon is 90 degrees. So I'm not playing those games. I'm just prepared to be hot. I do this every year. <laughs> So I put on my fall sweaters, October 1st, <laughs> no matter what, you got to be committed to this, okay? You, <laughs> you got to be committed because if you're not, you're going to pull out your summer stuff. No, I don't have time for that. I will just be hot, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So luckily, I actually got a head start. Oh, I forgot one thing. Let me go get so, it. So I actually got a head start on making fall things because I'm on my sabbatical, which I had been enjoying a little bit too much. Um, if you haven't watched my Why I Love Teaching video, go watch it. Um, you'll learn a lot about why a lot of the 300,000 teachers are leaving. <laughs> I miss my kiddos though, but I just don't miss the lifestyle. So I've been doing a lot of um, sewing. Um, especially for fall because I tend to, especially ha haven't had been a teacher, August comes, you don't have any time and then it's October. It's like, oh shoot, <laughs> I'm scrambling to make stuff. Like last year, I literally was like making Halloween stuff like October 30th and then didn't finish. So I just had to give up and save it to for this year. So a lot of these are unfinished projects that I finished this year in August <laughs> so that by the time October comes, we're good. So first thing that I made is this little adorable shirt for my two-year-old. So I have a two-year-old toddler and I started this last fall season, did not finish. It just got put on the back burner with everything else and I wanted to make sure I finished this. So I think I finished this in like late July. Cause I just, I found it and I was like, I gotta finish this for him. If you don't know what it is, it is the clown from it, <laughs> Pennywise. And in this family, we love it. I mean, my son hasn't seen it of course, but my husband and I, that's one of our favorite movies. So I plan on making matching shirts for all of us. I have enough fabric to do my shirt and my husband's shirt. It really depends. <laughs> Really depends on my time management skills if I could get our stuff done, but I definitely wanted to get his shirt done. So it is complete. We also have, and some of this stuff hasn't been photographed. So if you go over to my Instagram, you might see some photographs of some of this stuff. Some of it I haven't had a chance to take pictures of yet. So this one is a little bit hard to explain. I'll have to go back and put the pattern that I use in the description. But basically, if you know about McCall's patterns, this is the McCall pattern that is the turtleneck off the shoulder long sleeve shirt situation. Um, I'll put a picture of the pattern so you can see it, but it's really cute. I made it too big, so I had to alter it like 500 times to make sure it fit right. But I'd rather it be too big than too small. Most sewers know about that. You can take in, but you can't really take out <laughs> most things. 
So this piece is very special to me because I started this last year and did not finish it. And I was so excited to make it because I thought my students would love it and I just did not finish it. This was one of those pieces I was like doing October 30th, trying to have that day to wear it. And then I, I didn't finish it in time. So I was like, I'll just have to wait because it's not like I can wear this in November. So if you can tell, it's like mommy wraps. If you guys are into Disney, I love Disney movies. <laughs> Disney Channel movies like I'm not necessarily like a Disney blockbuster lover like Lion King and stuff but the Disney Channel movies Under Wraps Halloween Town Tower of Terror I mean like come on like I'm a 90s kid so all right and we have this beauty right here. So this is a duster that I made of this beautiful, it looks Mexican inspired. That's why I was drawn to it. Very colorful, very beautiful, very easy to make. I could have added buttons and buttonholes, but it just didn't make sense because I'm wearing it as a duster instead of a dress, a button down dress. So I will be photographing this soon. I just have gotten in a photograph funk, so I haven't really photograph any of my mates yet all right and my last mate thus far is these beautiful pants and i was looking at them like i could wear this <laughs> together this would be perfect yeah so this might be what you guys see in my photo when i make it so these are um mimi g if you guys remember the pattern with the bell bottoms and the option of the slim fit pants, this is it. So I love how these pants fit on my body. I mean, they're excellent. So yeah, and I actually kept the, the frame on the bottom. So I'm gonna let it fray out a little bit before I sew a stitch to stop it from fraying but right now these pants are really long on me so i'm i'm gonna let it fray out a little bit i just thought that was a cute little detail all right so let's get to the fabric the fabric yeah i'm trying to get all this stuff done by december <laughs> i believe i feel like that's realistic like yeah i could do this so first things first, the fabric that I just showed you, this actually, and this is how you know, <laughs> when you're creative, you're just gonna use, you're gonna take stuff from one hobby to the next thing. So I took a lot of stuff from my hobby to my career as a teacher because I had to intertwine it. If you guys seen the post I made about the dresses I had my students design every year, that was me trying to get some <laughs> fashion design out of my time in teaching. So I always love those things because it intertwined my passion, you know? So I say that to say that this, I actually bought this fabric and put it in my classroom as a bulletin backboard. I use fabric instead of paper. So most of the fabrics that I use for my bulletin background, I plan to use to sew <laughs> after using it. So I use this cause sunflowers is me. Like I, of course, that was our whole theme in my class B. So I had sunflower everything and I bought this fabric. I was like, well, as soon as I take it down, I'm making some something with it. It is fleece, if you can't tell. So I thought that was unique because usually when you see sunflower fabric is meant for summer, spring mates, but this is definitely a fall winter mate because it's fleece and big. So I gotta figure out what I'm making with it, but it'll be something dope. Maybe like a jacket. Is that what you call it? Shirt jacket? Yeah, maybe that. I don't have a pattern for it, but I can go get it. All right, also we have all these fabrics. So get comfortable, <laughs> go get something to eat something to drink, maybe a notebook. <laughs> All right, and I got that fabric from Joann's. This fabric I have been holding on to for way too long. And this is fabric that I gotta make a whole video post 
TikTok situation about. That's why I've been postponing it so long. So as you can tell, this is one of the Simplicity Vintage fabrics. But what I did last summer with my time <laughs> is I colored all of them black. <laughs> So I had to melanate my fabric because I'm a vintage girl and I hate that they assume that black people did not exist in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. As if we didn't have any fashion sense, as if we just, from slavery to Oprah, I can't stand it. You know, there was a lot of Hollywood and glam. Yeah, we had our struggles. We had the civil war, you know, the civil rights march and all of the stuff, all of the stuff we know, but we were fashionable the whole way through. Like, so all of them are black. <laughs> I made them different complexions. Some are light skin, some are, you know, caramel, some are chocolate, but they're all black, okay? So I, I do that, I, I tend to do that to all the fabric that has pictures of everyone as white because <laughs> I'm like no like no 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 representation matters and since I'm a woman of color I can't see myself wearing anything but women of color and that's not to say I wouldn't wear you know white women on my fabrics but they shouldn't be the only ones on my fabric that doesn't it doesn't make sense <laughs> All right, so, and that also aligns with my bit. I'll talk about that, but my business really aligns with, like, representation and all that good stuff. But here we go. You guys have seen this fabric before. This is that orange fabric, and I have it in, like, 500 different colors. Um, pretty obvious this screams fall. Don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'll be doing something. We also have this brown satin like. I don't know if it's satin, but it's satin like. And I was thinking about making a button down dress or maybe even a button down shirt. I think it's super sexy. It gives sexy vibes. So yeah. All right. We also have, sorry you guys, do you do you unfold your fabric and fold it back up? I do because I don't feel like dealing with the mess after. <laughs> we also have something for my son. So I was in Joann's and I came across this fabric. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. <laughs> you know that character right there. <laughs> so, I mean, in Speaking of representation, it was one of the few, few characters they had that had brown skin. Yeah, it's not like he's black, but I mean, he's an anteater, but <laughs> I'll take what I can get until I can get in the stores with my stuff, right? So yeah, I, I was drawn to it. I was like, yeah, I definitely, this will be a long sleeve button down shirt for my son. Fall, it screams fall. I also have some of these fabrics I've showed you guys, so I'll skip them. But also have this fabric. I bought this fabric in December of last year. And it was some crazy like 70% off sale that Joann's was doing. It was like 70% off like everything. They rarely do that where it was like the stuff, you know, not just the clearance fabric, like all the fabric. <laughs> was 70% off um yeah and I got this and I got like a mauveish purplish cream one I made a dress out of it if you go on my Instagram at Sally and Sam style you'll see it but yeah I definitely be making like a shirt situation out of this it is the um uh double brush poly so it's super soft super comfortable Definitely will be a long sleeve shirt situation for sure. Um, yeah, I love that fabric. I've been holding on to it for a while because I knew I couldn't use it in the spring, summer. Um, so, we also have, sorry you guys, it's so much fabric. Okay. <laughs> All right. We also have this African print fabric and Kara fabric from 
House of Mommy Lata. So this is the only fabric that I've actually bought from House of Mommy Lata. I love this fabric because I love Paisley print. I was drawn to it as soon as I saw that Paisley print. So I was thinking about making a suit, honestly, with this. Like I wanna make a blazer and pants to match. Um, it is six yards. The six yards isn't a continuous piece. So I'll have to work with that, but I feel like I can make it work. I mean, because pants will be like a yard and three fourths at max and a blazer probably would be about two to three yards. Um, also we have one of my fabrics fell. Okay. Also, we have this beautiful fabric. So I know I haven't told you guys, but it most of these fabrics are either from Joann's or um, uh, African source, like how I said, House of Mami Wata. I also do um, Afrique Clothing Boutique. That's a good one. I had to, I had to, I had to stop myself because <laughs> I was buying way, way too much from them or um girl charlie okay so this is a beautiful i'm not gonna unfold it all the way but as you can see it screams holiday it screams holiday even if i don't get to it in the fall i could wear this in the winter around the holiday season easy what am i gonna make with it i don't know because it's sheer and that's always something to consider but i will be making something <laughs> For sure. All right, we also have, so this is from Hobby Lobby, actually. Hobby Lobby is on it, you know, every now and then. Most times they're not with their fabric, but every now and then, you know, you gotta go like once or twice a year <laughs> and you'll find something that's like quality for some reason. So, okay, we have this brown leather. I'm pretty sure it's faux leather, but I mean, it's, when I tell you it's quality leather, because I have brought, bought some crappy leather, some leather that literally like has runs in it like stockings. Like the slightest touching is like a rip. Like I hate that cheap synthetic fabric or whatever they use but that's not it so that's from Hobby Lobby this fabric is different I think I've showed you guys this it's a brocade I believe um and it just drew my eyes to it because it's beautiful and it's my style so still not sure what I'm going to make with that one but I see winter I see winter for sure. Um, this one, this one definitely streams fall all the way. So I got this corduroy last year. If you go back to my Instagram, I made these like caramel um, corduroy bell bottoms with the same Mimi G pattern that I made with the plaid pants I just showed you guys. So this is a yellow corduroy. I actually got this from Hobby Lobby. See, Hobby Lobby is on it every now and then. Good quality, thick, stretchy, like stretchy. I mean, so I. it seems like I got a lot of it. Maybe it look, I don't know. It looks like more than three yards, but I know I got a minimum of three yards. So I got this because I originally wanted to make some pants. And then that turned into, I want to make a corduroy suit. And then that turned into, I didn't make nothing. <laughs> so, so this year, <laughs> my hope is to make something with it. That's what I have told myself. Like the goal nowadays is to just cut the fabric. Like I don't have time for planning. I don't have, I don't have time for it. It's not going to get done. So just cut the fabric. And be done with it like get it done <laughs> that's that that's my process right now i mean i don't have time to write it down like i was writing down you know i write it down once i'm for sure i'm cutting it but i was like writing it okay like fall ideals you know like 
the fall collection and then you like never revisit the list again and then you start making stuff that wasn't even on the list so it's just whatever <laughs> it's just whatever all right i have this fabric from girl charlie it is a um oh what is the name hachi i think that's how you pronounce it either i i believe it's hachi um but it's a sweater knit and i know it's hachi h-a-c-c-i i believe don't quote me but um it's just pretty much like a like a thin sweater knit fuzzy material also paisley print i loved it because of the colors because of the paisley print because of the comfort i plan to make a cardigan and pants situation never got to it so the goal is to make this because i'm tired of like fabrics that i have plans for and then i never i feel like once i cut it i'm more likely to make it if i don't cut it it just the season passes i tend to make a lot of seasonal pieces because i'm a very festive person which can be a good and a bad thing because it challenges you to get it done but since i'm a seasonal person it's like if i don't make it in that two to three month window I have to put it, you know, put it in a pile for next year. It's not like a, oh, I can make, keep make. No, it's like, this is supposed to be for fall or this was supposed to be for the holidays or this is supposed to be for Valentine's Day. I'm very specific when it comes to the season, but it could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. So we have more of a neutral fabric like this. I don't have too many neutral fabrics that I could wear year round. Maybe that's the problem. Um... I could wear this spring, summer, fall, winter. <laughs> fall, winter mainly because of the color. Spring, summer because of the um, the actual weight of the fabric. Really thin, um, but really pretty. I could see this as a romper. I could see this as a wrap dress. That's what I've thought about. I could see this as pants. So yeah, I like it. And I'll, I'll definitely be cut, cutting that one soon. Okay, now we have my fabrics are falling. Okay, so now we're getting into the Afrique <laughs> clothing store um, or Afrique boutique. No, I think it's Afrique clo clothing store, I believe. Um, so she has like the best and car fabrics I have ever seen. Like, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm a vibrant type of fabric person. I don't have many solids. The solids that I do have are different <laughs> so i mean i was addicted to her site for a minute so this is another paisley <laughs> i just noticed how many paisley fabrics i have okay so this is paisley print print super colorful super high quality in car never had an in car in car fabric like this before until i started buying her stuff and that's when i realized i'm like oh this is how it's supposed to feel this is this is how it's supposed to sew because I used to always be scared of sewing with Ankara because I was buying the crap at the, you know, um, like Asian owned fabric store. And it's nothing Asian owned fabric stores, but clearly it's not authentic, you know, to um, Ankara print that's made in Africa. All right. So we also have this one. I believe. I may have showed you guys this one, but I bought this fabric to make a blazer dress. When I first saw it, it remind, reminded me of a vintage suitcase. I don't know if you guys remember the suitcases that had fabric on it like this. It looks like upholstery, really. But um, I wanted to make a blazer dress for sure because it's purple. I love purple. And it has stretch to it. So I was like, okay, this is, it's hard to find fabrics like this that are stretchy. So I was like, I could really make it work because it has ease. And I was going to cut it to make a little blazer dress um, situation for the fall, the winter. All right. And I think I'm on my second to last one. Okay. All right, this one 
is also from the Afrique clothing store. Beautiful, beautiful. Reminds me of my mom in the 90s because she had a lot of, for some reason, they had a lot of dresses like this that had like abstract art or like tropical fruit on it. I remember so vividly seeing like so many different dresses and play suits she had with fabric like this. So yeah, I got it because it reminded me of her. I definitely want to make something dope with it for sure. I was going to make a dress, but then I changed my mind because I found a different fabric that I thought about making with it that I cut, but haven't sold up yet. All right, and our last fabric. Let's see if I can get it to come to me. <laughs> All right, last fabric is from Joann's. Beautiful crushed velvet gotta do crushed velvet so i don't know if i've ever said this before on this channel but my favorite fabric is velvet i have loved that velvet was probably the first fabric i sewed with like sewed something big with like i used to make like formal gowns crushed velvet was my thing <laughs> like crushed velvet velvet in general was like everything to me and i kind of got away from that when i started making stuff with sewing patterns because it's a lot of wovens but um if you go on my instagram page you will see the burgundy colorway of this is like a wine colorway that i made a gown um for our family photo shoot with so when i seen this i'm like oh this is the fall version <laughs> so i definitely can see myself I don't know this might be a jumpsuit I'm thinking jumpsuit I can see the jumpsuit in my head if you if you have a lot of patterns you know what jumpsuit I'm talking about it's a McCall's pattern and it's a jumpsuit that has like a cape situation over it and the girl is wearing velvet in the picture so I'm thinking I might make that and extend the pants um but yeah I love this fabric or I might make a skirt situation too. I don't know. I don't know so many different options. All right, so let me put this on me. So the time has come. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to like, subscribe, share. If you want to follow me on Instagram on um, my sewing page, I'm at Sally and Sam Style. Um, I try to post regularly. I kind of stopped the past month, but I'm back to posting regularly. The stuff that I make, I post way more often there than I do here. Um, I'm also on TikTok at Sally Love Sam. So I hope you have a wonderful fall season. I'll be back with more, but start if you, depending on where you are, enjoy the weather, the crisp air of the fall go get a pumpkin spice drink right now all right see you soon